Hi, everybody. Welcome to today's webinar focused on sustainability certifications and eco labels and finding the best one for your brand or business. I'm Molly Hughes with Softly. Today, we are featuring the US EPA's Safer Choice label. Businesses as well as consumers are increasingly concerned about keeping their workplace and their household safe of harmful ingredients. And we hear it over and over again that shoppers are skeptical of non-verified sustainability claims, which is one of the many reasons why certifications such as Safer Choice are so important. Certifications build trust. Furthermore, there are certain labels that qualify you for programs such as government grants, the UP, US EPA's environmentally preferred purchasing program, as well as for retail sustainability programs like Amazon's Climate Pledge Friendly, Wayfair Shop Sustainably, and more. So we stay on top of all of this. So keep following softly to stay up to date on all of these opportunities. So for this webinar, we have a great, or a series, I should say, we have a great list of organizations we're going to be featuring including Certified Compostable with the BPI Institute on June 8th. We're going to learn the difference between biodegradable and compostable. We also have an entire library of webinars on eco-labels that you can reference on our website. So you are in the right place if you're a business considering certification or if you just want to learn a little bit more about the process. All right, so at this time, I'd like to bring on today's guest. We are thrilled to learn about Safer Choice and all of the great programs that go along with this label. With us today is Clive Davies, Chief of the Safer Choice Program. Welcome to our webinar, Clive. Thanks so much, Molly. It's great to be here. Yeah, so I'd like to start by learning a little bit about you. How did you get involved in sustainability in the EPA? Sure. So uh, I've been at EPA for a while. Uh, I started out in water programs, things like things like drinking water. Um, and I moved to um, an area of EPA that does work with chemicals. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were talking in, in, in this group about the work that we did and other things that we could do. And the work that we were doing um, at that time was exclusively about um, chemical regulation. This is about figuring out which of the chemicals that are out there in commerce pose the greatest risk mm -hmm. um, and what should EPA do about, about that risk. So it's really thinking about the red end of the spectrum, if you want to call it that. Um, and we were thinking in EPA um, that there are a lot of leadership companies out there um, who really want to use safer chemistry rather than, um, you know, that it, that's, that's a focus that they have. Yep. But how do those companies figure out um, which chemicals really are safer? Um, and so we undertook an effort to identify the chemicals that are on this green end of the spectrum. But that left another question, which is, um, okay, so here we're identifying these chemicals and some businesses can choose to use those if they want to, but wouldn't it be great if we were able to reward the companies that mm -hmm. want to use these safer chemicals, recognize them for the work that they're doing in that way. And so we came up with a safer choice label um, and this label can be put onto products that meet EPA's criteria for safer chemistry. And they, they give a boost to the companies who apply for and earn um, the Safer Choice label for their products. Um, so the, the Safer Choice label is a label that appeals, for example, um, to consumers. They see the Safer Choice label on a product with a brand. And those two things together um, deliver a great message. Safer Choice, well, this is, a, this is an EPA la label mm -hmm. that says safer choice, which means it's my choice. It's got safer chemistry inside. And then it's on a branded product that you know you love and you know works well. So you put those two things together and it's got great power. And so what right. we're, what, what, you know, our voyage, if you will, into sustainability was about safer chemistry. And that's what mm -hmm. we're focused on. And, you know, we really appreciate the fact that, you know, we set things up for 
businesses that want to take advantage of what EPA is doing. And if that works out, um, that's great. Nobody has to be part of the Safer Choice program, but if they want to take advantage, that can be really be helpful for a company. Yeah, it's certainly a voluntary program. I love that you were involved um, with Safer Choice from the beginning. And, um, you know, I've, I've gone on the website and I've seen there are a lot of criteria and standards and there was a lot of research, you know, that went into it. So it really is a value, certainly for consumers that, you know, that are familiar with your label. Um, but the value for businesses, purchasers, retailers, let's talk a little bit more about what you're doing for them. Um, I think you even have a rewards program. Yeah, no, that's rewards absolutely program, right. Yeah, so, so the, um, so retailers are, are, you know, interested in telling a positive story about sustainability and the way that retailers can have the greatest impact, obviously, is through the products that they sell. Mm -hmm. And they have found it useful to, when, when working with us and when working with the product manufacturers that's, that they're their suppliers, um, to ask that things move a little bit more toward sustainability. And so mm -hmm. those retailers encourage the product manufacturers to put products through the Safer Choice program so that the retailers then have a sustainability story that they can tell. And the good news is also that the companies also have that um, that sustainability story to tell. And that's just the, the sustainability stories, I, I think, are really important because you, know, mm -hmm. you have um, environmental activists out there who, um, if your company doesn't have a good story, um, are not going to treat you as well as they would if you do have one. And frankly, if you make products that are mixtures of chemicals, which our partners, that's what our partners who make products with the Safer Choice label, you know, those are the kind of products that they make. Mm -hmm. um, and if you make those kind of products that people are exposed to, you know, what better way to tell a sustainability story than to say those people are exposed now to safer chemicals that right. um, are much less likely to cause a problem. And also when they're disposed um, down the drain, um, they mm -hmm. cause fewer issues and hopefully no issues with um, with the environment. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's really important to consumers uh, that that they have access to safer chemistry. You know, they've, they've told us that that's the thing that they look for when they're shopping. Um, and the way that they've had to do this in the past is, you know, they look at a label, they look at ingredients that they don't understand, and they try to make mm -hmm. a decision based on that. Um, you know, you can significantly improve the way that you communicate with those folks through having the safer choice label on a product. So that chem so that, uh, consumers in the second or two that they take to look at, um, the, the parts on, of a label, um, can make a good decision. So that's yeah. it. So you're taking kind of the legwork out of it. Um, and also, um, a lot of the research too, cause you know, these are chemicals mm -hmm. with long names that not everybody you know, is going to take the time to to research. So, yeah, yeah I mean, you could you could say that um, EPA has done the work so that the consumer doesn't have to. Yep, exactly. Um, you have for your partners, your business partners, you do have a um, an award that you give out at the uh, the end of the year, I'm assuming, or partner of the year award sometime during the year. Tell me a little bit about that. So the um, the certification that we do for products um, is about the product. You can use that logo on a product, but it's not to be used associated with your company, just that yeah. product. And then, you know, you can, you're, you're pretty limited in the way that you use that logo that you certainly can use to promote the product. Right. We felt that the companies who invest in safer chemistry, especially those who do extra work with retailers, perhaps with um, um, underserved communities, but getting their products out there with a Safer Choice label, those folks deserve a little bit of extra recognition. And so we put together our Partner of the Year Awards. We give these out once a year based on um, based on an application that a, that a, that a company can do. Um, but this is 
recognition for the company. So the company can use having won an award, they can use that in corporate reports. They can use that when they go on um, selling trips to retailers. Um, there are a lot of applications for mm -hmm. this award. And we have a ceremony with very high level EPA people who give out these awards to the winners. And uh, part of the ceremony is that the winners have um, the opportunities to, to submit a video to EPA that talks about their sustainability story. And we put that video on our website. So this also gives a company an opportunity to link to an EPA website that has a video about their company's sustainability story. Right. So this is an important opportunity right. that folks can take advantage of. Yeah. Are, are applications open now or is it in the future? The, the, the period is open right now. Um, the, uh, the, the, basically the, the period is open until the end of the month, but, uh, the, um, the, uh, the period for which you're applying was calendar year 2022. Mm -hmm. Um, so, uh, but, but folks can start working now toward, um, being able to apply for, um, for next year's award. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah. So we're going to actually talk a little bit about the certification process and walk through that um, in just a minute. Um, but if anybody does have any questions, please put it in the chat as we're speaking. Um, but before we do that, are there any particular categories of products or businesses that um, are best suited for Safer Choice? Yes. So Safer Choice um, works with um, we, we call them sometimes wet chemical mixtures, um, mm -hmm. but these are things like um, like like detergents and um, uh, detergent, all-purpose cleaner, um, mm -hmm. laundry. A lot of industrial cleaners and home cleaners, right? And for industrial and for home, that's right. And you've got up on the screen right now, you've got the the logos or the, the labels that can be used with these products. And you can see on the left, we've got a little family of products, depending on the type of product that you've got and how it might appeal to the folks who buy your products. Uh, we've got these different types of labels that you might use. Mm -hmm. um, and on the right hand side is another uh, label. It's um, part of our family for uh, disinfecting products. And these are products that um, that are regulated um, under FIFRA is a statute that EPA implements for antimicrobial products, disinfectants. And so you can even have uh, a, a label that's part of our family for those products as well. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so it looks so, like it looks like up here it's it's primarily that cleaning um, disinfecting category. Um, are there also personal care products that can be because I know I've seen um, seen before some some personal care products kind of products, you know, lotions, things like that, that had the safer choice, um, um, logo. Yeah. So, so the, so the place that we are with that is, um, recently we've been in discussions with the food and drug administration over the idea that safer choice could move into labeling of personal care products. Okay. Um, it's early days for, for this. Um, so we don't have the label out on, more than a few products like um, like hand soap, for example, mm -hmm. in that space. But um, but in the future, um, we certainly um, may, and I hope that we do. Um, but but still early days on on that. If companies are interested in talking with us about potential future labeling of products, that would be that would be just fine for us to um, have a conversation about that. Excellent. Okay. Yeah. So put your information um, in the chat, and we will certainly. Um, you know, pass this on to Clive and the, his group at the EPA um, when it's all over. So, so we're talking a lot about chemicals. Is there actually a like a, a chemical ingredient list that's a, a bad list and a good list on the website, or how does that work? Yes, absolutely. So, we have on our website something that we call the Safer Chemical Ingredients List, mm -hmm. and it's focused on. Um, chemicals that meet our criteria, safer chemicals that meet our criteria. Um, and we've got about a thousand chemicals up on that list that could be really useful to somebody who makes a, a, a safer choice product or wants to make a product for certification. Um, a product manufacturer can 
use that list to take a look at their product, compare it to their product that they may want to have cert certified and um, know whether, you know, how hard it would be to get into the program. I've got, mm -hmm. you know, seven ingredients in my product and six of them are on the list. So I know I'm in pretty good shape. You know, let me find out about this other ingredient. Um, the other piece is that um, if it turns out that one of the ingredients in your product doesn't meet our criteria, that mm -hmm. list is a great place to go find ingredients. That an, you alter an alternative. Yeah, an alternative. And mm -hmm. we list the, the chemicals on the safer chemical ingredients list by what we call functional use. So surfactants are in one place, solvents are in another place. Mm -hmm. And that's we, we find that that's a great way to communicate with product manufacturers who think about ingredients in terms of the function that they provide in the product. So if you've got a surfactant that doesn't meet the criteria, here's a great place to go find other surfactants right. so you can come up with a high performing product. Right, right. Since we're talking about the kind of different products that are best suited, there is um, a couple questions from the audience. How about wildfire chemistry or fire chemistry for lumber? Um, fire chemistry for lumber. I mean, it's a, how, uh, so if this is about, um, if this is about a, 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 a uh, you know, a, maybe a starter, um, like a, or, a, or starter. a product, maybe a product that could be used during a wildfire to suppress, right. yeah, right. to su suppress flames. Now, it is absolutely possible that those are things that we could um, that we could use the safer choice label for. Mm -hmm. um, it's a um, it's a challenging area of chemistry, I would say, um, mm -hmm. but we would be very happy to talk with folks who make products that are in that space. Excellent. We're going to we're going to give a, um, an email um, at the end of this webinar. So um, make sure whoever asked that question that, you know, the, that email is is for you to ask um, follow up questions as well. OK, so let's go into the certification process. And I think people would like to know kind of what that process looks like. Yeah, that's it. That's a really good question. An important thing to address. Um, so. I'd, let me just take a second to talk about our standard, um, which has requirements primarily for ingredients. You know, the way that we think about sustainability for, call them chemical intensive products, if you want. Um, the, the most important thing is that the ingredients in those products meet safer chemistry criteria. Right. But our, and, and, and that is what our, our, mm -hmm. uh, our standard focuses on. But we also have criteria for packaging, for performance, for pH, for, for other things as well. Um, we think of those as whole product criteria. They're important, um, but those are on top of, of safer. They're kind of weighted a little differently or, or suggestions based on um, well, your- Yeah, product. suggestions and, and, um, and even things that folks have to meet, but we feel like you know, they're important for sustainability, but you know, they, mm -hmm. they build on the safer chemistry piece. And then um, I, I, the other thing I want to say that I haven't said yet, which is that, you know, our expertise is about safer chemistry. Product manufacturers' expertise is, it may be about safer chemistry too, but it's definitely about high-performing products. Mm -hmm. And so if you can put the safer chemistry um, piece together with the high-performing piece, um, you know, EPA and a company can make a uh, can make a great team, safer choice in the company. Right. Um, so kind of really quick, let me stop you on that one. There was also a, a, a question from the audience um, asking about efficacy. Is that part of because you're saying high performance is efficacy um, um, at all included in this? Um, you know, yeah, ab absolutely. It's it is part it is part of our standard. Okay. Um, we have uh, performance requirements that products must meet to be in the Safer Choice program. But having said that, you know that high performance that's that's the thing that 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 the company brings to the equation. You know, rather than us. I, uh, but uh, we do not want uh, to have anybody making products on the market that are mm -hmm. making safer choice green claims that um that don't, don't work, work. <laughs> they have to work they have right. that has to be part of the equation mm -hmm. yeah right right yeah. okay so let's talk um on the screen right now we have kind of the certification process you have the applicant um they can find the application on the website right 
So they put in an application, then it says it's reviewed by a third party. So outside auditors, do do the companies find the auditors themselves or do you have a list of qualified auditors? So the, what we've done in the Safer Choice program is we have what we, we use the word qualified third parties who yep. work with product manufacturers to get the products into our program. So if you look at this flow charts, basically think of yourself as a company um, in that orange box in the upper corner and you want to be part of the Safer Choice program. Well, what yep. you would do is you would go to our website you would select from one of our third party profilers or better yet, choose all three and say, hey, I would really like an estimate of how much it's going to cost to get my product through um, through the program. And that's um, it, what we think is important is that these third parties compete against each other for cost, for timing, for things like that. So we've got some um, some good market forces going there. But the third parties put together a package on your product. Um, they make a recommendation about whether it should be certified to EPA and, um, and then EPA gets that package and makes the certification determination and communicates back with the company. We also will have conversations with the company. Say for example, you've got a surfactant that turns out to be an issue in the product. We can help you find another one, for example. Yep. Um, and the other piece is all so there's of some, some co consulting and kind of help along the way in figuring it out. Absolutely. Absolutely. And this is all this is all based on what the company wants. If the company, mm -hmm. the company doesn't submit unless they want to. The third party doesn't send anything to EPA unless the company gives the go ahead. This is all driven by this the is all voluntary. So all voluntary. Yeah, mm -hmm. we don't we don't push this. And um, um, but we're very happy to work with folks. Absolutely. Okay. So, so once it's submitted, um, is there, is there a typical timeline when you see somebody at the very beginning, by the time they, if they say, start working with auditors right away, they, you know, go through that, you know, certification process. Now they're submitting to Safer Choice. How long does it usually take? It, it usually takes uh, six or eight weeks at the third party and six or eight weeks at Safer Choice. Um, and then, and then certification. But I would say, um, that sometimes things don't go exactly as planned. For example, you might have to substitute an ingredient and then a company is probably going to want to do performance and stability testing. So that might, you know, take a time out from the, from the process to do that. So um, we like to push things as quickly as we possibly can through this, through this process. And we try to make it go faster. Um, and uh, you know, we, we know that it is important that things move at the speed of business because right. those are the folks that we're dealing with. So, um, mm -hmm. so that's what we do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, another question from the audience, how long can the company use the label? So I think it's how long do they use the label and if there are um, audits going forward? Right. Absolutely. So, um, so once EPA grants certification, that is done through something we call a partnership agreement that's signed by an EPA official mm -hmm. and a company official. And that specifies um, that there's a three-year period for which that certification lasts. And okay. during that three-year period, uh, there is an on-site audit from one of our third parties and then a paper audit. Uh, remote audit and it confirms um, it confirms good manufacturing practices and and the way that the product is formulated and then we renew the partnership at the end of the three year period. Mm -hmm. So is there um, talk about cost for is there a cost through EPA or is it only the the auditors that you're paying? Yeah, that's such a good question. So EPA does not charge for participation in the program. However. Um, our third parties um, you know, do this work to make money, and uh, so they charge. But we, to keep the cost um, as low as we possibly can, we have these three um, companies that that we um, that we work with, and they do compete, as I mentioned. Um, and I would recommend that if a company wants to work with the Safer Choice program, that they don't just choose one of the third parties to get an mm -hmm. estimate. Go to everybody, make sure that they are all telling you what their best cost is for review of your products. Mm -hmm. And then other questions um, from the audience. 
so are there any financial assistance programs or um, grants available for, for businesses that are looking into getting the Safer Choice um, certification? Unfortunately, we don't have a grant program for um, specifically for helping folks get into the Safer Choice program. Uh, what we do do is we focus on keeping the cost as manageable as we can. Mm -hmm. And also, um, well, we, 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 we do that and, and we uh, give technical assistance, especially um, to smaller companies if, where, where we can to help them come up with the, you know, with high performing um, safer mm -hmm. products. Mm -hmm. You know, there is another thing that um, often works in the Safer Choice program, and that is that there are companies who specialize in developing formulations um, that other companies can private label. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah. you know, if, if, if that's a better route for a smaller company. So then... it's, a, it's a formulation that's already been Safer Choice certified that you can then come in and, and, you know, get it on the back end, basically. Yeah, perfect explanation. That's okay. exactly the way that it okay. would work. Yeah. Okay, excellent. And then um, another question is, it's, it's per product being certified. So say you have a product that just has a little bit different formulation. Um, do you any, know anything about the cost of getting the entire, that entire um, new product certified when it's, you know, not as much, or is that kind of, once again, in the auditor's hands. Well, well, there are lots of there are lots of shades of the question that you just mm -hmm. asked. And say, for example, yeah, you've got a you've got a product that's in a um, in a twelve ounce size, and you want a thirty two ounce right. refill yep. for that product. What you you do is you simply go into our data system, you submit the new label for that same formulation, and we will process that for you at no cost. If, on the other hand, um, you have an all-purpose cleaner and you want to offer it in three um, scent variations or mm -hmm. color variations, um, you can submit those all together as one application so that all of that is evaluated at the same time and it's all the same cost through the third party. So there are lots of ways that you can um, save money um, through the program. Right. So I know there's there's not any um, grants specifically through Safer Choice. However, there are grant opportunities that are open right now for states and, and government organizations through your um, pollution prevention P2 um, program. And um, Safer Choice has, has been kind of put out as, as kind of like a, a poster child um, when it comes to labels within this program. So um, what are your thoughts? Um, you know, I know this is still a lot of it in, in its infancy stage, but do you expect maybe some help for businesses that are wanting to get um, labels such as Safer Choice going forward through a grant program um, like this? So, um, so there are there are, as you've said, there there are grants um, that are related to Safer Choice, and these are grants. Um, that EPA would give that um, the recipients would have to be a state or a tribe, but the target is that they're to help businesses. Mm -hmm. um, and what EPA is asking of the states and tribes who are applying for these grants right now is that they target those toward underserved communities, um, communities who, for example, are in a food desert and therefore don't have access to um probably safer products either. You know, at the same time, you can't get vegetables. It's it's harder to get safer products. And so what we're looking at is having um, grant recipients working in that area, um, but also working with folks who are safer choice partners who have these products to get the, get the products into those underserved communities, help the underserved communities understand the benefits of using mm -hmm. safer products, and make those things available. So there is a lot of opportunity here. Um, un unfortunately, it's probably not directly for formulation of, of products. But I, I would emphasize what, what, what you said, Molly, about this idea that there are other ways to have safer choice products, such as mm -hmm. using this private label route and having another, um, having someone else who's got a, uh, a certified product that mm -hmm. would like to, you know, have you be a private labeler for it. Right. And um, for those that are really worried about it being cost prohibitive, 
Um, I would I would suggest that you also make sure you're you're following your state um, EPA and and other grants that are out there because there may be some things that that you know are going to be able to assist that aren't necessarily through through your program. Okay, we have some other questions here. I'm actually just going to read them um, and because some of them are a little bit long. But one of them is: Would the fact that the product in the market being used is unsafe and can't pay, pass EPA certification and is still used to date? in a newer product surpasses all the criteria for safety and e efficacy and is currently safer choice certified, be as far as consideration. I don't know if that totally made sense, but I read it just like it said. So it might not be exactly well, Sometimes right. it's hard when you're, when you're typing. Yeah, yeah um, exactly. So it's, it might be, so um, for whoever answered or asked that question, um, if you don't get the answer, once again, reach out to us after this is over. We'll make sure we we pass it on and, and see if we can get an answer for you. So so but but I would say that our philosophy for these products is, you know, we're focused on the products that meet our criteria mm -hmm. and helping the manufacturers of those products get the benefit in the marketplace that they deserve. Um, mm -hmm. We're not so focused on products that don't meet the safer choice um, criteria. You know, I would say one other thing too, which is that um, we have a safer choice summit that we hold once a year. It's going to be at the beginning of October this year. And if there are product manufacturers who are thinking about dipping their toe into the program, um, coming um, to, it's going to be in Arlington, Virginia on the 3rd and 4th of October, um, that's a great opportunity to, um, to learn more and like, like Molly said, there's going to be an address at the end of this, um, this presentation, and you can get more information through that. Mm -hmm. As you know, um, this webinar series is really to help, um, help people find the best eco-label for them. Um, whether it be safer choice, you know, which is is more chemical based, or it could be, you know, you're looking for something that has to do with animal cruelty. So, um, what do you know about the government procurement program as far as getting like on, um, you know, a green list for government procurement? Um, are there certain labels that qualify for that or is it only safe for choice or how does that work? I, I would say that it's a wonderful opportunity right now for product manufacturers who are making safer products to think about government procurement because um, agencies have recently been... Um, directed to procure um, green products. And um, there's a transition going on now where the government is figuring out how um, to make safer products, green products um, available. And um, EPA has a system for designating um, labels that meet our criteria and that should be purchased and our environmentally per uh, preferable purchasing um, program that you, you referenced, Molly, we can provide um, information on that so you can see about uh, which, which labels are preferred. But Safer Choice is certainly one of them, as is Energy Star. But we're talking about a market here that's in the hundreds of billions of dollars and um, certainly worth, um, it's worth a product manufacturer thinking about it. Yeah. So um, there's still questions coming in. Um, we'd like to keep this webinar a little over a half an hour, which we're there right now. So I'm going to ask just a couple more and then then we're going to wrap it up. Um, one question I think is a good one, though, um, and it has to do with product categories and expanding the product categories that you use. Do you see a potential for mattresses um, that use the safer choice um, polyurethane foams or any foam or latex suppliers to be able to get the certification? So, so we're always we're always interested in expanding the safer choice program into new into new categories. Mm -hmm. um, I I would say that a mattress that a mattress foam that's based mm -hmm. on a um, an isocyanate chemistry is very difficult to get into the um, into the safer choice program. So, I would I would say that that's a very high bar at least at this point in time. Mm -hmm. And then the last question we have right now is kind of going back to when we had talked about the Safer Joyce um, competition. Um, do you know um, the 2023 when the deadline is um, for submission? Yes, absolutely. So that is the end of this month. Um, we're looking for um, for applications to be submitted. And, um, and if you need to talk to someone about that, 
address at the end again, but we're very happy to, to talk to folks to make sure that you understand what it is that we're looking for and help you talk about, you know, we're, we're, we will talk with you about your situation um, to help you. Got it. So we've talked a little bit about, um, you know, where you're going in the future and kind of different product categories, but is there anything else that you would like to share about really what's your future goal um, with the program? Or the direction well, you're going. Yeah, yeah. Well, um, I think a really important thing for us is, um, first, first of all, the, the Safer Choice program is appealing to consumers and purchasers. And, and we have survey data that shows us mm -hmm. that um, once they understand what the program is, what the Safer Choice program is, 81% of all consumers want to use the Safer Choice label to inform their purchasing decisions. And then if you look at leading indicators, parents, millennials, the number is about 90%. Um, so th those are some pretty fantastic numbers. The trouble is um, only about 43% of people or even lower than that probably um, recognize what, what the label is. Mm -hmm. So raising that level of, of consumer um, mm -hmm. recognition is really important. And frankly, I think that um, if the program moves into the personal care space, um, uh, that will have a reinforcing effect on what we do in the cleaning space and will really help the, the label um, become more recognized. And for EPA, the reason that that's really important is because our mission is safer chemistry and the better the reward that we can give to a product manufacturer um, for using our label, the better for us because yeah. it will drive safer chemistry. You're doing a lot of great things and you have your, your work cut out for you. So um, we're going to let you get back to work. Is there anything else you'd like to add before we do so? No, that's fantastic. I'm just thrilled to be able to be here and um, really appreciate you investing, Molly, in making this webinar such a success. Thank you. Yeah, no, thank you very much for being with us today, Clive. Um, you shared a lot of great information about Safer Choice, and we really, really appreciate it. So research shows that just as convenience became a basic consumer expectation, really the demand for product transparency is quickly becoming a baseline for consumers. So today we learned how a certification increases transparency and will earn customer trust and may even qualify you for some programs and some awards. Our goal at Softly is to really help you with that process. We have a platform that will take your message um, directly to the consumers. You can see it on the right-hand side of your screen right now. It's our personal sustainable shopping assistant. This is a free, and free download. You can get it on the Chrome Web Store or at GetSoftly.com. And we elevate and suggest sustainable products that are certified to be what they say they are to shoppers. Um, we can also help you find the best certification for your business. There's really a lot to consider when it comes to certifications. There's like 500 eco labels out there. So we know it can be really overwhelming. But we'll look at your sustainable initiatives and we'll help you find the one that's going to give you the best return on your investment. And this is really important to us. So we're offering free consultations. So, so please reach out to us. Um, and here's information on the label we featured today, Safer Choice. You can check out their website. Um, I know there's some of you that need follow up on some um, with some emails. So reach out to us or to um, that email. And um, I guarantee you're going to learn a lot just by going to the website, though. There's a lot of information there. And also, this is a live webinar, um, though it's being recorded. So it will be available later on our website as well. And then now you see on the screen information on how to get a hold of us at Softly. As I mentioned, we do provide free consultations because we know how confusing the eco label process can be. Thank you for being with us today. Please join us again. Have a great day, everybody, and please tread softly on the world.